Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Jeff Beals here at your surface broadcasting live from the KFAB penthouse studio high above Underwood Avenue in beautiful downtown Dundee. Glad you joined us. You will not find another show in the metro area that talks about what we discuss, and that is the city getting bigger, more vibrant, more prosperous, uh, healthier economy. We talk about cool construction projects, and at the end of the show, we'll give you a lot of good intel about new restaurants and retailers. Thank you to our sponsors, Dingman's Collision Center with four metro area locations, along with Cheer Athletics, the nation's number one all-star cheer gym. And without any further ado, it's time to bring on my co-host, a man who is a legendary real estate deal maker and all-around entertaining fellow, Trenton Magid. Good morning, everyone, and good morning, Jeff. Well, good morning, Trenton, and we have some uh, good news, and that is we have a Grow Omaha Eats restaurant review this week. Every other week, Chris Corey does us uh, proud. He does, and 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 uh, you know, a lot of people say Chris has got the best job in the world. His job is to go taste food. And write about it. And uh, this week, he talks about Grayley's Ice Cream Parlor, which is in downtown Papillion. Sounds so cool. I, I read the article, or at least part of it. I've been. I'll to, finish it, Chris. Uh, but it is it is a neat historic building. 1870 was it? It's old, and it's in the middle of downtown uh, Papillion, and the ice cream is delicious. Now, here's the thing: if you read the review, when I've been to Grayley's before, I've only ordered the ice cream, and it was great. But if you read the review, they have these things called hand pies. They're kind of like, uh, you know, like a pie version of a runza, but maybe maybe a little bit better, and uh, maybe maybe a lot better. No offense to runza, but anyway, like they would have uh, these little hand pies, and one might be like the filling that would be in a chicken pot pie. They don't call them American pies, do they? One of them may have been a. Reuben. And anyway, so those sound really good. If you want to try Grayley's, uh, stop by Downtown Papillion. If you want to read the review, stop by GrowOmaha.com. When you get there, you will see reviews on the navigation bar. Uh, hover over that and then uh, go down to where it says Eats and you can see Grayley's. You can see the one two weeks ago on Cattle Call, uh, Kathmandu Momo Station, and all of the reviews we've had since the beginning of time. So it's really, you can get a complete meal at Grayley's. You can, and uh, probably, you know, as good as the hand pies are, uh, you're probably looking forward to the dessert. Oh, yeah. Now, while you're on Grow Omaha, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of other stuff there as well. We post news items every day, a lot of different features. We're constantly adding new features and attractions to that website. And I also want to mention something. I want to reiterate something I said last week in case you missed it. We have a very popular newsletter, which comes out every Thursday afternoon. We send it to 23,000 people via email. And that list is getting so big, and a lot of these inbound email systems have become stricter and stricter with outside email, especially that which is sent in bulk, like ours is. So if you have signed up for it and are not getting it, a couple things to keep in mind. You can put news at growomaha.com in your address book, make it a whitelisted approved sender uh, email address. That can help a little bit. News at growomaha.com. Yeah, it's always from news at growomaha.com. If that doesn't work, we always have every edition of the newsletter on the Grow Omaha website. So you just go there, growomaha.com, click on newsletter. And then the nice thing is not only do we have the most current one, we've had we have every edition to back when we did our first newsletter four and a half years ago or whenever it was. So anyway, I want to make sure people know that because uh, we've had a lot of trouble, like Cox.net has been really bad about uh, blocking inbound email. Cox um, blocker. And then we've had a few uh, Gmail, Yahoo, some of those big common ones. Those are the ones that have the biggest problems. But sometimes companies will block, um, you know, bulk emails from outside of the company. So if you're not getting it, uh, we got a few solutions for Plus, you. Plus, you can see all of our uh, news briefs. Every day there's new news briefs. We have four writers now in addition to Jeff. And uh, people love that up-to-date information. Absolutely. And with that, we're going to go into our news of the week. That's one of the reasons you tune in for Gromaha. We have a lot of growth and development news, and we're going to thank Eagle Mortgage for making it possible. They have been sponsoring us now for about nine to ten years, and uh, we really appreciate Eagle Mortgage being loyal to Gromaha and to Grow Omaha listeners, making this possible for thousands of people every week on KFAB to get the news. And uh, 
Speaking of Eagle Mortgage, if you are in the market for a new house, either now or sometime in the next year or so, one of the first things you want to do is contact Holly Schneiderwind or one of her team members at Eagle Mortgage. The office is at 114th and Davenport. You can find them online at eaglemortgagecompany.com. Sit down with them, talk with them. They are not a bank. They're a mortgage broker, which means they can shop and comparison price a variety of banks to find the one that's best for you. And it doesn't matter whether you go in traditional loan or one of the specialty loans or you know, VA, FHA, whatever. They'll help you with it. They'll do a great job. EagleMortgageCompany.com. Okay, Trenton, a uh, really cool project uh, came before, uh, is coming before the, the city planning board. Um, multifamily apartment project and a hotel are planned for the southeast corner of 132nd and Pacific. Now, this development, as you know, is called Sterling Ridge. Absolutely. Lockwood Development. Lockwood Development has done an outstanding job making it. You can make an argument that when it comes to visual aesthetics, it's probably one of the you know a handful of best looking developments in Omaha. And when you take 156 acres and make it a mixed use development and you spend about two million dollars on landscaping with mature trees, um, that helps. Yeah, it's it's a very, very attractive area. It's very pleasant. And it's famous for a few things. It, it is the uh, the home of uh, LinkedIn's uh, regional headquarters. Uh, they have the Tri-Faith Campus there. A lot of cool restaurant retail. At any rate, if you can picture it, there was one part of it that has been yet to be developed, and it's the southeast corner of 132nd Pacific, which would be the northwest corner of the development. And so the plan calls for... Um, a uh, five-story, 145-room hotel that would be right on that hard corner. Five-story, 145-room hotel. City documents do not indicate uh, the brand of the hotel. They might not even know, as far as we know. But then right behind that, or to the south of that, would be a six-story building that would have 250 apartment units um, those those 250 apartment units would be on four stories up top, and then the the bottom would be two stories of indoor parking plus some street level retail space. Now that retail space would have 12,000 square feet for stores and shops, and about 14,000 square feet for a restaurant. The size of a Walgreens, ladies and gentlemen. Big restaurant. Well, we have not heard official documentation um, that Ruth's Chris is going to be the restaurant. However, one of the apart attached documents to the um, uh, proposal that was submitted public to doc- the public board, document, yeah, public documents shows a thirteen thousand five hundred forty three square foot Ruth's Chris Steakhouse restaurant that would have enough seating for three hundred and eighty diners. Um, so it appears, uh, you know, if they put that on there, the likelihood that it is Ruth's Chris is very good. Right. And otherwise, it'd be kind of embarrassing for them to put that on there. The closest existing Ruth's Chris is in West Des Moines, Iowa. I've been to that one. It's new, very new, very nice. Uh, Kansas City had one for a long time, but it closed several years ago. Other than that, there's Ruth's Chris is in, in Denver and Minneapolis. Do you remember them that big, though, Jeff? They are now. Like th- that newish one I, I went to in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, oh, I was there about a year ago, right when it opened. Um, it's huge. It's huge. Now, I was in one two, a couple days ago out of state, and it was not so big. Um, but um, at any rate, the uh, that, that's going to be a nice addition. This hotel and, and an apartment right there makes a lot of sense. I think they need condos there as well. That's, you know, I think Omaha needs more condos in a lot of places. And Lockwood's talked about it. It's really expensive to, to build condos and mixed-use developments like this when you're going vertical with different food groups, when you have retail, parking, uh, office, retail. But, but, but what was interesting is, you know, this site, I believe, was had, had uh, COVID never happened and people stayed in their offices that probably would have been another office tenant like Yeah, I think it was in. slated to be a, a nice big class A office building. Yeah, and and but it times change, but I think you, you need daytime and nighttime if you know if you want restaurants and you want um 24/7. You know, we we've talked about that too much, I think probably where Village Point there was always talk about doing condo towers or or there's other developments like Village Point that that also did a lot of residential uh, oh, not, yeah. not just hotels. 
Village Point totally missed um, missed the opportunity to put apartments and condos above those stores. It would have been a home run. Uh, it was it was a it was a blown opportunity that they didn't do that. But when they built Village Point, it was back in two thousand three, and and people in Omaha weren't thinking that way like they are now. Because if you have active living, and and when uh, Hartwood Preserve comes online, when Lanaha builds that whole complex there, that area called the Row, the, the, the Row, and and. Think about it. There's no better place. If, if you're 55 and over, you know, let, let's say, I guess 65 is the new 55 or something like that. If you're going to live and not want to drive and you can go to restaurants and you're active seniors, you want to be in an area where it, it's like a an urban feel, but with some a lot of landscaping. You know, something I've been curious about with all of the momentum we have downtown, speaking of um, uh, on, you know, independent living over 55 living or whatever you want to call it. Um, I've always wondered if something like that would be good in downtown because, you know, a lot of people like that whole downtown lifestyle. What if they had a 55 and over thing where most of it was was independent, but then there would maybe as you got older, there could be assisted living or something. Continual like that. care. Continual. Yeah, that was I think they call it age in place. And I don't know if it makes sense to have memory care in a place like that, but uh, might might be too expensive. But an interesting thought. I've always thought, you know, with all the momentum downtown, people might like that down there. Well, you know, I like 132nd and and Pacific is great, but I also think like Village Point. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a condo tower uh, around Village Point that you can walk to things. You know, kind of by um, the uh, Kent, Kent Stinson Park. Uh, yeah. To the, to the west of that, I think there's some land. Stinson Park, that's Exarbon, right? Yeah, that's oh, what I meant. Okay. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Exarbon Village. Yeah, yeah. Do that. And, yeah. And because and, uh, that has so much mixed use there. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. Well, continuing with the theme of um, big apartment buildings that are proposed, a developer plans to build multifamily building multifamily buildings in Old Mill South. Uh, this would be at 10842 and 10826 Farnham Drive. Now, where is that? Picture the big Charles Schwab um, Charles Schwab uh, office building. And then uh, it's 12 stories or so. Right to the east of that are two two-story Charles Schwab buildings that are no longer occupied. And in between them is a four-story, nearly 400-stall parking garage. Well, here's the plan. Tear down those two two-story office buildings, keep the parking garage, and then on each uh, the site of each of those two two-story office buildings would be two four-story apartment buildings. Altogether, it would have, uh, let's see, I don't have a number of, oh, yep, I do, 327 apartment units total, mix of one to three bedroom, uh, market rate. The uh, They would also have outdoor pickleball courts because Trenton, as you like to say, you can't have anything without pickleball courts yeah. today. I'm looking for a dentist with a pickleball court while I'm waiting. Oh, I wouldn't go to a dentist without a pickleball. Oop, I shouldn't say that. Yeah, my, your brother has my a, brother's a dentist, and he has no pickleball court at his office. But I'm sure that'll change. Who's something. the developer on that one? Do you know? Um, I could I could find out uh, and let you know. know next week. That'd be great. Yeah, and I appreciate that assignment. Um, but but there's an example where there's not a lot of amenities around there. No, but, and you know where are you gonna walk to, and you got great views of the interstate. Um, yeah, the it's interesting because the one that Lockwood's doing that would have a Ruth's Chris in it also has access to all that other retail that's boom right there walking right. Old Mill South. So even though this would be four story buildings, you know, connected to an existing parking garage, a little bit of urbanity there, it would still definitely be a suburban lifestyle because you would have to have a car to get anywhere. Right. And I'm not knocking it, but it's it's almost like well, office is soft and uh, but we got this really cool parking garage. Uh, what can we do with a really cool parking garage? Oh, I know. Well, but on the other hand, as we know... And we're pro-development here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, don't forget, uh, data came out just about a month, month and a half ago, that there are 13 tenants competing for every available rental unit in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, you could make the argument, we need to be putting apartments in a lot of places yeah. just to, to have people to places for people to live. Understood. Yeah. Well, with that, let's uh, take our first break of the hour. That is your news of the week brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. When we come back, we're going to have more news of the week by Eagle Mortgage because we have several other stories that we haven't got to. So we're just going to keep giving you more and more news as the show goes along. You're going to be so informed 
Um, come 10 o'clock, you won't know what to do with yourself. But at any rate, we appreciate you being here. You're listening to Grow Omaha. It's brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. All right, after all that, it's time to come back to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Cheer Athletics and Dingman's Collision Center. Uh, Cheer Athletics. We uh, we like to call them the nation one nation's number one all star cheer gym. If you're not familiar with all star cheer, it's a very athletic, competitive form of cheer. In fact, it's going to be an Olympic sport uh, in the next summer Olympics a few years from now. Uh, but uh, this is a great way for your kid or grandkid to get involved, uh, to get in shape, and to learn how to be a member of a team and to learn to compete and learn a lot of other life skills as well. Cheer Athletics Omaha is located in Papillion uh, near Highways 50 and 370. And you can find out more at caomaha.com, CA as in Cheer Athletics, caomaha.com. All right, we've got uh, more and more news items for you. Um, Going to talk about, uh, got some good news out of uh, downtown Omaha for growth and development. Uh, the city council this week approved tax increment financing for a combined $25 million of affordable housing projects, two affordable housing projects downtown. Both would involve uh, the renovation of historic buildings. The group is led by Neeraj Agrawal of Clarity Development. Uh, the first building is at 1501 Howard Street. Um, you might not even notice this. It, it's it's directly it's kind of an underwhelming uh, brick building. It's historic, of course. It's uh, right west of the Central Police Headquarters. It's been vacant for a long time. And the plan is to uh, put 15 or 16, uh, part, no, 16 apartments on the upper floors and street-level retail. And then the second building is just a few blocks to the west at 500 South 18th Street. It's called the Standard Oil Building. It's what it's part of what we've been calling lately the Flatiron District, the yeah. neighborhood around the Flatiron Building. Anyway, this would be 40 apartments on the upper five floors and uh, street level on retail on the ground floor. Not a huge number of units, especially with some of the urban core projects we've talked about lately, Trenton, but we desperately need more affordable housing in the core. People on our, our Facebook page definitely talk about the need for affordable housing. There's a lot of people out there that think that all the apartments that are getting built are just way too high but there are options for affordable housing and you know taking these areas and making them more dense in population helps everything with with the streetcar going ahead with the more retail with all the entertainment options with the park and everything uh omaha's stakeholders have done an amazing job almost unlike any other city to just really make downtown more vibrant uh ronnie chang a comedian is at the steel house tonight which is cool i'm gonna go see the steel house uh for the first time have you been there you know i've never set foot in the place yet and i've been wanting to i just haven't gotten around to it but i like how you took us from affordable housing to comedians that's pretty cool no problem yeah so you're going yep all right well enjoy that show hey a uh, local company uh or i should say an omaha-based company that's all over the nation scooters coffee has teamed up with Hasbro, the no way. toy and game company, and they have come up with Candyland coffee beverages. Remember the board game Candyland when you were a little sure. kid? So they've got these beverages that are all branded with Candyland, kind of clever uh, deal they've got going on there. I've got some other business news for you. The Omaha Airport Authority announced this week that Allegiant will offer seasonal nonstop service from Epley Airfield to Sarasota, Florida. It'll start February 14th. Allegiant currently offers nonstop service from Epley to Las Vegas, LAX, Orlando Sanford, Phoenix Mesa, and uh, several cities in Florida. Now, if you count the destinations that Allegiant has to Florida, plus all of the other airlines that serve Florida, Omaha will, come February 14th, have nonstop service from Epley to nine different Florida cities. Wow. That's progress. A lot of people are moving to Florida. They they are, and a lot of people vacation. You know, back well. to the Candyland Scooters uh, partnership. Okay. I have an idea for Stories Coffee, because they've been growing lately, yep. based here. Love Stories Coffee. They should they should do a collaboration with the Game of Life. Why? Do you remember that game where you spin the yeah. wheel? And, uh, I don't know how you would... Uh, 
tie it to stories. It's tied to stories, but like all your different life events and things like that, and mm-hmm. it's very family oriented. I haven't fully developed the concept yet. Yeah, get back to us next week okay. after you flesh so that one out. We both have a, an assignment, apparently. Yeah, yeah, flesh that one out a little bit because I think there's potential there. I like where you're going. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the airport, okay. shall we? Other airport <laughs> news. Uh, Thanksgiving holiday weekend is one of the biggest travel periods of the year, as we know. And the Omaha Airport Authority this week said that it expects 185,800 travelers to go through the Epley Terminal during the next week. That's approximately 2.7% more than last year. So Trenton, I like to play Stump the Trenton. Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we've got a handful of days on the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, We've got Wednesday before. We've got Thanksgiving itself. We've got Black Friday. And we have Saturday after Thanksgiving. okay? Okay. And then we have Sunday. The Sunday when it's all said and done, you're kind of depressed because the Thanksgiving holiday's over and you got to go back to real life. And listen to Christmas music. Out of the, I like Christmas music. Out of those five days, which one will be the busiest travel day at Epley this year? So out of the five days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend, stump the Trenton, which one will be the number one busiest day? I am going to say... And I don't know why. Thanksgiving Day itself. Thanksgiving itself is not even in the top three. I'll give you one more chance to get it right. All right. Um, We're not including Sunday, right? No, Sunday's in there. Okay. I will say uh, Wednesday. You should have guessed Sunday. Okay, number one is Sunday, December 1st. (laughs) It's supposed to be the busiest day. Tuesday, November 26th, will be the second busiest day at Epley, and Wednesday, the day prior to Thanksgiving, number three. And with that, it's time for us to take our... What's that? I messed that up. You came close. You were within within five. So with that, it's time for us to take our middle of the show break and get the news and a few other things, and then when we come back, we're going to have the Noddle Company's commercial real estate development spotlight for you and some more announcements to share with you. Like I say, we're full of news this week. You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by Cheer Athletics and Dingman's Collision Center on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beal sitting next to Trenton Maggot. We're in the KFAB studio, and we want to thank Cheer Athletics and Dingman's Collision Center for being our sponsors. Uh, Dingman's, uh, they, I tell you what, we've had the chance uh, to work with them for many, many years. Trenton has represented them on several real estate deals, and we've gotten to know the Dingman family and and just realize what high-quality people they are. And they take that high-quality mentality and attitude uh, that they have, and they, they apply it to their work. And it doesn't matter whether you go to the 120th and Maple location, the 144th and Industrial, uh, the, P- P- the Papillion location, uh, or even Saddle Creek Road and Midtown, all four of them awesome, do a great job, and you'll be very pleased with the way they make your car good as new. Also, don't forget, they offer mechanical services as well. Well, we've got two items uh, to report today on the Noddle Company's Commercial Real Estate Development Spotlight. This is where we uh, we look at news in one or more of the Noddle Company's development areas or projects. Now, Noddle is based here in Omaha. Uh, they do work nationwide, but they've got big-time famous developments in Omaha like Exarban Village, River's Edge. Uh, Builders District, North Downtown, Village Point West Medical Campus. They built office buildings, shopping centers, you name it. Noddle Companies does it. By the way, have you ever noticed Noddle Companies is really good at supporting local sporting teams and sporting events? Oh, absolutely. That's they used a- to have ton- – maybe they still do have been to go to Nebraska games in person – but down at Memorial Stadium, they they had stuff everywhere. Yeah, CHI Center. You know they're really good with a lot of the high school sports too. So appreciate Noddle Companies. At any rate, the Noddle Companies developments that we are going to highlight today. Number one is Exarban Village, and uh, you know Exarban Village is it's one of the coolest places in town. Well, the news there is a a new restaurant in the Inner Rail Food Hall. It is called Romance Barbecue. It's a Texas-style barbecue concept. Like I said, opened in the Interrail Food Hall. That's the real cool 
uh, eating area right east of the HDR World Headquarters in Exarban Village. The menu features house-made offerings like smoked brisket, grizz, or not grizzly, glizzy sandwiches, uh, kimchi, and by the pound barbecue selection. So we got to go try this place sometime for lunch. Yeah, and Sam Nottle did a great job with the area outside with heaters and covers and everything else uh, this time of year. All right, and then for the rest of our Nautil Company's commercial real estate development spot out of the week, we go east to Council Bluffs, the River's Edge development. Uh, that's that that real estate development on the eastern foot of the Bob Carey pedestrian bridge. And there's been a lot of activity lately there. Uh, we talked last week about the Mid-American Adventure Tower uh, going up. Well, it hasn't really gone vertical yet. They're still doing ground and foundation work with it. Um, and we've also talked about some um, some apartment buildings that Broadmoor is doing there. Well, Broadmoor is going to keep going. Uh, the Council Bluff City Council this week accepted a proposal from Broadmoor for River's Edge Block 1. This is a 1.7-acre parcel located to the east of the big public pavilion they have there. It's been vacant for a while, and, and frankly, it's been a little bit frustrating, I think, for the developers in the city. The city of Council Bluffs had the lot. And, um, and they wanted something big there. Maybe it's not going to be quite as big as what they initially envisioned, but still a very cool, very sizable project. Broadmoor plans about a $25 million, 91-unit, five-story apartment building. Uh, plus, it would have two levels of indoor parking, one of which would be down underground. Um, but Broadmoor, like I said, has other stuff there. In fact, if you put all of the apartment units together at River's Edge, Broadmoor has 229 units there uh, completed and 48 currently under construction. So now they're going to be adding another 91. A lot of construction going on in Council Bluffs and a lot of projects, a lot of multifamily. Yeah, in fact, uh, that's a really good segue, Trenton, because now that we have gotten through the Nautil Company's commercial real estate development spotlight of the week, I've got two more Council Bluffs development stories. I was teasing when I said I hadn't uh, read the letter this week. God bless you. Okay. Uh, the first one is 3000 Second Avenue in Council Bluffs, Lockwood Development of Omaha. We talked about them earlier with 132nd and Pacific. But Lockwood is slated to transform a 6.45-acre site on the northeast corner of 30th Street and 2nd Ave in the Bluffs. Uh, the city council accepted uh, Lockwood's $58 million proposal. It was one of two submitted in response to an RFP. Here's the deal. A 264-unit apartment complex. Um, they, they are, uh, it's, looking, it's looking pretty impressive, a big mix of uh, apartment sizes and styles. And um, then four traditional four-story apartment buildings would be built to the north and south of the First Avenue Trail. So a lot of cool stuff going there. And the whole entire project is supposed to be complete right about three years from now. Yeah, it's walking distance to Dairy Queen. <laughs> Thanks for putting that in um, a form of perspective that a lot of our listeners can listen to, including me. Thank you. Okay, also in Council Bluffs, really close by, 2800 Second Avenue, Hoppy Development out of Lincoln um, is going to uh, develop land northwest of Second Ave and South 28th Street, right along this First Avenue Trail. That's where they eventually hope to put the streetcar in Council Bluffs. Uh, at any rate, $17 million project uh, proposal aims to build 89 apartment units. Um, there would be even some live work units in there. And uh, that looks like a really cool project right there. And that uh, would be completed April of 2027. So about two and a half years. Congratulations, Council Bluffs. A lot of activity going on in that area. Well, let's uh, go clear on the other side of the metro area to 144th and Cape Hart Road. Wow. Sarpy County. Uh, Facebook continues to get bigger. Wow. Yep, yep, you heard it right here. When they first started a few years ago, they built a massive data center complex on the northwest corner of Highway 50 or 144th Street and Cape Hart Road. Got that done. Then they completed one on the northeast corner. Huge complex. That wasn't enough. Then they went south of Cape Hart Road, which took them from Papillion jurisdiction to... Sarbury County. In Springfield, yeah. So then they built a big complex southwest corner. Now the latest... Huge building, 
south of that. So even closer to Fairview. Do we know how big or how much? Uh, big. Big would be my answer to that question. Lots of blade servers. Big. That's still the technology. Bigger than you can imagine. All right. With that, we're going to take our final break of the hour. And when we come back, it will be your Perkins Kreitzer Construction lightning round. I'm looking at the list. And there are a lot of things on it. We've got new restaurants, new retail, got a lot of new coffee shops. We're going to talk about wiener schnitzel and and burgers and pizza joints and all sorts of stuff. So stay with us. It's your Perkins Kreitzer Construction Lightning Round coming up. You're listening to Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot on Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics, right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Thank you, Gary Saddlemeyer. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time for... For your Perkins Kreitzer Construction Lightning Round, in which we talk about a lot of things in a very short period of time. Thank you to Perkins Kreitzer Construction. Uh, They are the ones that make this possible. Now, we have told you they are a Class A general contractor. If you've got a building in mind, yes, they can build it. And yes, they'll do a great job with it. And yes, you'll love it. Uh, But we like to talk about some of the cool restaurant and retail uh, businesses that they build out. And just uh, yesterday, Ziggy's Coffee opened its very first Omaha locations. It was uh, constructed by Perkins Kreitzer uh, Construction. So it opened yesterday. The actual address is 5102 South 201st Street. So basically basically 201st in Q. Um, 865 square foot, pretty much drive-through building. Uh, now, Ziggy's is based in Denver. They have 101 locations in 20 states, including previously existing ones in Lincoln and Fairbury, Nebraska. So that's an example of what Perkins Kreitzer Construction does for us. They they bring us cool businesses and cool restaurants. But for you, Gromaha listeners who make decisions for businesses, if you need to build something, just go to p-cconstruction.com. That's p-cconstruction.com. All right. Um, a lot of people have been asking, when is Wiener Schnitzel going to open? It's the California-based hot dog chain, very popular. Um, not a lot of uh, locations outside of the West Coast. So Omaha will be one of the earlier cities to get it. They're going to the MH Landing uh, development, which is northeast of 72nd and Grover, and they're going to be sharing a building with Salty Dog. Now, certificate of occupancy was expected to be granted for Salty Dog yesterday, and they're opening in December. Then the other part of the building is Wiener Schnitzel. It'll have a drive through. Uh, I just poked my head, actually, I didn't. I looked through the window yesterday because it was locked, and they were still doing a lot of interior build out, but I'm told. Um, by the landlord that it's a possible Wiener Schnitzel could open by the end of December. So not much further to nice. wait. And I say that because we are buried with emails um, from Gromaha listeners and subscribers. When's Wiener Schnitzel? Everyone's excited about this Wiener Schnitzel. So Schmitz are you saying that I should or should not get all the hot dogs from my annual New Year's Eve hot dog eating contest uh, at Wiener Schnitzel, or should I go with a, a safer bet? Well, if you have to order in advance, you might want a safer bet. But if you can wait till late December to order, then wait for Wiener Schnitzel. We know they'll be fresh. Let's talk about burgers. Charred Burger and Bar is um, going to open in the former Meatball space at 180th and Dodge. Trenton, you know, there were two Meatball locations, the original Blackstone, 180th and Dodge. 180th and Dodge is going to be yet another Charred Burger and Bar location. Yeah, that's fast because they just opened at uh, West... Uh, at uh, Southport. Southport West. Yeah. and They uh, have a location in Lincoln a, now, too. Oh, do they really? Yeah. South it's, Lincoln. It's, it's a good product. They got a good, like, hamburger salad, which is yeah. interesting. Um, Hope they're not expanding and too I didn't fast. Even, you know, I'd been over there, and I must not have turned my head to the right, but um, the fact that Panda Express just opened out on the other side just of this that week. shopping center, right in front of Cabela's. I believe it was um, Thursday was their grand opening. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff going on in that area. Gambino's Pizza appears to be going into the former Los Sole Mio Banquet Hall at 3020 South 32nd Ave. So the old Los Sole Mio was on the east side of the street. Mio. The Banquet Hall was on the west side of the street. More recently, it was Ellie's Chinchorro, which is a Puerto Rican restaurant. Ellie's moved to North Downtown. And That's then- good. It is, yeah. So Gambino's going in there. Gambino's has 44 locations in Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and Oklahoma. Uh, They have um, Nebraska locations in Fremont, Kearney, and North Bend. 
So they've got this one coming to 32nd Avenue. They also have one that's getting close to opening in Gretna as well. Trenton, some people might want to own their own Jimmy John's building. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, uh, we've got a almost a lifelong client that is very active, uh, uh, Mitchell Brands, and they have given me the honor of representing them in the sale and disposition of 10 pieces of real estate that – they go from about three hundred thousand dollars to about a million seven, million eight, and what's cool about these is they're what you call absolute triple net. So if, if there's business people, just people with money, if you want a a uh, basically a no nonsense investment mailbox money where you don't have to have a property manager, I've got some great locations left, and that what you get is you get some of them you get the building. Uh, and the land together. It's called Fee Simple. Uh, good returns. We just lowered the price on uh, four of them. And if if you're out there and you want information on these investments, um, you get uh, you get paid throughout the year. And um, they are great buildings because Jimmy John's will be there for a long time. But if and these are ten year new ten year leases. But if they ever should leave, uh, it's a drive through building. Good locations. It can be a Starbucks. It can be a lot of different restaurants. And uh, so give Trent and Maggie a call at NAINP Dodge. All right. And uh, with that, we've got more restaurant and retail news for you. Church's Texas Chicken plans to open a second metro location at 2310 North 90th Street. This is where a former Godfather's Pizza was located. Well, they tore that Godfather's Pizza down. And uh, when Churches starts building, it'll be a 1,700-square-foot freestanding building with a drive through Churches currently operates at uh, 168th and Maple Area. Shoot, we're out of uh, time, so we'll save the rest uh, for next week. I hope everyone has a great week. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you Perkins by Perkins Kreitzer Construction, along with Cheer Athletics and Dingman's Collision Center. We'll chat with you next week at 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.